Welcome to Living from the Heart. I'm your host, Tina Thrussell, also known as Light Dancer. I'm the co-founder of Best You Can Be and messenger of the Shin Dao, the way of the heart. The way of the heart is living with love and kindness and compassion for self foremost, and that flows out to others. And I am delighted to have on the show today my friend Liberty Forrest. I consider Liberty a passionate creator. She is fun and fun loving and incredibly creative. She paints, she writes books. She's created this wonderful new character, uh, the witchy one. And Liberty brings so much passion into everything that she does that she's a perfect fit to be here on the show today. So I'll introduce Liberty in just a moment to you. For now, I would like to draw your attention to the words that are crawling along at the bottom of the screen. It's an invitation to receive a complimentary subscription to Heart and Mind Matters. Every other Tuesday morning, Neil and I send out an inspirational article, a YouTube video, a quote of the week. It's yours. It's complimentary. Simply subscribe at B-E-S-T, the letter U, C-A-N, the letter B dot C-A. And now, without further ado, I bring on screen none other than author, speaker, Huffington Post contributor, Liberty Forrest. Hello, Liberty. Hi, Tina. So nice to be here. Thank you. It is a delight to have you here. Um, I, I, as I said, think of you as a passionate creator. I've seen your paintings, I've heard you speak, I've heard you sing, <laughs> I've read some of your writing. It's all incredibly creative. And and I just and 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 you're a talented psychic card reader, advisor, um, a hypnotist, a mindfulness trainer. You have an incredible amount of skill. And all of those skills have one thing in common. They, I think, uh, have this n need to listen to that quiet little voice, to listen to the voice of the heart in order to be in the space to do all of those things that I've listed. Would you agree? I absolutely would. And gosh, when you list them, and actually, I think about the ones you didn't list. I sound a little bit psychotic, <laughs> but there just are all these different aspects to myself. And I remember when I first started painting, well, that was a bizarre story, but um, I, I, it just fell out. Once, once I decided to start and just do it, I did 50 paintings in the first month. Oh, and, my gosh. I know. And I remember taking this portfolio to this man who was a, a friend of a friend and he was an art uh, collector and an art uh, dealer and he he eventually acted as an art agent for me um, like two weeks after I started painting I sold my first one for a stupid amount of money and the guy was saying I can't believe you're willing to let it go for so little uh, and the price came from this guy I was like I can't ask that he said oh yeah you can you really can um, and, and then I started having exhibitions. And I mean, it was just ridiculous. But anyway, as I was showing him my first collection of all these paintings that had fallen out um, at his suggestion, when he just said, just do it, just start. I'm pulling them out of the portfolio one after another. And he just, he's like, I cannot believe these all came out of the same person. They're like, all oh, these, there's like 17 different styles in there. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I sound a little bit wacky, I guess. I suppose I am. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's why I love you because I have that kind of wackiness too, where I'm kind of all over the place and full of things. And you know, I've had I've had people on the show who were born knowing what they're going to do or what they're going to be for their life. They have this calling, right? I'm and still it out. <laughs> yeah, and then there's people like you and I who do dabble in a little of this and a little of that and a little of this and a little of that and. You know what? I think I'm finally coming to the place of accepting 
the world needs all of those people, yeah. right? We need all of that difference. Yeah. I so, yeah, we do. So, of all of those things that you do, has it been a case of, I mean, you certainly didn't plan to be a painter. You said yourself, yeah. like, oh. if it's just a suggestion, do it and woof, look what happened. Probably the same with the doing readings. You never plan to be a card reader. It just well, actually, I'm not a card reader. I don't use cards, but yes, I, I just I'm psychic and just pick stuff up. And I'm also a medium, so I connect with spirits. But the, the the painting, I just want to back up for a sec. What you just said when I said it was suggested about doing paintings. The first painting I ever did was an entire mural on my bedroom wall. <laughs> oh wow. Because I had this image in my head of this mural. I could see it for years. And I kept thinking, well, I can't paint. So, you know, that sucks. And I, But I kept seeing it. And after a few years, I finally thought, wait, if it sucks, I can just paint over it. It's only paint, right? So I did it, and it actually looked pretty good. So I went, oh, that's interesting. So I did my whole office, all four walls. And then I started doing murals. And in, well, in both of my homes, I had a home in Canada and one here in England at the time. So I was, I did all the murals I could in both homes. Then I started doing, I did one for my mother and I started doing them for some friends and I ran out of walls. And that's when the friend said, why don't you try something smaller like canvas? <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, it was, it was just this vision. And I finally decided to try oh, heck, you know what, I can paint. But even even without that, and one of the things I tell people a lot when they say, oh, I couldn't paint. I mean, I'm not brilliant. I can paint some stuff that people like. That's fun. I don't care if anybody likes it. Sometimes even I'm not liking what I created. But I, I tell people this a lot when they say, well, they wish they could paint and, oh, they can't paint or it would look terrible. And it's not about how it looks. And it's very subjective anyway. The point of it is to have fun and just express yourself. Who gives a rat's ass if it isn't, you know, Michelangelo? Most people don't paint like that. It doesn't matter. It's just an expression. And there is no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. Just do it because you love it. That's the point. So sorry, what was your next question? Oh, the psychic thing. Yeah, that happened when I was a kid and I dreamed that my two best friends were dead. And I woke up, was getting ready for school and I couldn't shake the feeling. And I went to breakfast and I mentioned to my parents, it was weird, my dad was sitting in the kitchen at the table. He was usually in the living room reading the paper, but he was at the table and they looked kind of funny. Anyway, I sat down and said, oh, I just had this horrible dream about Kathy and Lori and I told them. And they looked at each other like I had six heads. And then my dad went and got the morning paper and showed me an article and they were dead. Oh, so wow. That was my introduction to being a medium. But at that time, there were no psychic fairs, psychic shows, psychic books, John Edward, or there was none of that. So it was terrifying. I didn't know what was going on. And it took years. But as soon as that event happened, it was just like opening the, the floodgate. And I started having lots more of those experiences. And, and so there's a difference. That's being a medium. All mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. And so being medium is connecting with spirit. Being a psychic is connecting with the energy um, of people or places or events or buildings and things. But yeah, I didn't look for that either. It was just there and I tried to stop it, push it away. Lots of times in my life, I've tried to make it just go the hell away and it won't. <laughs> so, oh, okay, I guess that's part of who I am. And once I finally shut up and embraced it, it got a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, not only easier to deal with, but do you find for, okay, so first is it's scary, it's challenging. It it's a process of learning to accept and deal and then embrace. And then doesn't it take you to another level where now it it brings joy and fulfillment into your life to follow those callings, yeah? Well, it did, yeah, because I I discovered through a process of years when I finally started doing kind of informal readings for people and you know I was um I would just say things that I knew or if a spirit turned up I, it took a long time before I had the, the courage to say because I didn't want to upset people because mm -hmm. it wasn't common you know but once I started doing that and saw that it was bringing comfort um I thought oh 
okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to do this then. And I finally figured out if, if, if I'm getting these messages, I'm supposed to give them. I'll never forget, though, the first time I got one with, uh, with someone I didn't know. And I was sitting in a pub it was here in England a long time ago, like, I don't know, 18 years ago or so, sitting in this pub. And I saw somebody, a guy across the room. And I thought, oh, no, I have to tell him something. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this. Not not here. Not no. <laughs> and not a man, because they're generally not as open as women might be. But I had to. I knew I had to. So I went and very hesitantly said, hmm, can sound a little weird, but gave him the message. And he just said, oh, thank you. I really needed to hear that. Thank you. So it was those kinds of things, when I got brave, and, you know, talking about living from the heart, I had to. I had to listen to that voice that was pushing me. You know, there was a reason I had to say it. So, okay. And then things got more interesting. It does get interesting when you listen to your heart. You end up being taken down paths that you could never imagine you would travel, yeah? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Like following your heart has taken you back and forth between living in Canada, Canada and the UK. How many times? <laughs> many. <laughs> With some luck, this is it. I love it here so much. <laughs> the universe kept sort of drop kicking me back to Canada for a while. You know, that happened a couple of times, but yeah, I'd love to stay here. So of, of your, of your many passions, of your many creative expressions, what 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 is drawing you the most right now at this point in time? The Vichy one. <laughs> because you see, she says, I am the Vichy one, but you can call me Vichy for short. Uh, she's she's fun because she lets me do really, really dopey, silly, very basic drawings with like stick people. Um, but they're 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 fun. I get to use my sense of humor because I love doing stand up. That's another of my favorite pastimes. Um, she just lets me be funny and lets me just kind of express what needs to be expressed, I guess, in a different way. It's just all about being silly and playful and having fun and making people laugh, entertaining, being entertaining and lifting people's spirits. Um, I can sit for I sit for hours on my bed and draw these pictures. And like eight hours will fly by and I cannot believe it. And I'm sitting there, it's two o'clock in the morning. And I think I've been sitting here since 10 o'clock in the morning, like 16 hours, you know, run out, grab a little something to eat and back on the bed with pencil crayons and drawing away and giggling. I'm sitting there just giggling as I'm creating this stuff. It's so much fun. So that's, that's top of my creative list right now. <laughs> that is so awesome. I wonder how many people... <sighs> You ever think about how many people in everyday life actually have that much fun, actually love what they're doing that much, that 16 hours can fly by in a blink? Hmm. Yeah, not a lot, sadly. Sadly, too yeah. many people are, maybe they, maybe they like their jobs or they're okay with their jobs or they're just used to doing their jobs. But I don't think a lot of people truly love what they do. and. Like really, like really, like in a passionate way, like it's part of who they are. I, 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 and I can get loving my job. I've had jobs I loved, but not in that same way where it just feels like a piece of your soul right there in front of you. And it's so much fun when you get to do that. You know, I mean, you, you with the things that you do as well, there's some, I mean, the dance and other, you know, you're very creative and we never did manage that painting date, did we? Uh, no, we never did. <laughs> Call darn. <laughs> How's that going, by the way? Are you painting? <laughs> I am actually not painting. And and uh, yet part part of why I love doing the Living from the Heart show is that I get to speak to people that I haven't spoken to in a while and they remind me, they remind me of how to bring more joy and more fulfillment and more ease and fun into my life. And and I've, I've forgotten, it's been long enough that we talked, but I've forgotten how much fun you are, how there is this 
childlike playfulness that just wants to be expressed. And just thinking the same about you and thinking, gosh, we really need to be talking more often. <laughs> because, you know, I see you that way too. There's this lovely light spirit in you, this light playfulness and um, fun. There's a fun loving sense about you and really easy going as well. Is what you know, I get from you, which I really love. So, and lots of creativity and vibrant, just vibrant energy. And I know it wasn't always like that for you because we had you know, that conversation, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what can you suggest for our viewers, Liberty? How do they get in touch with that? How do they bring that sense of loving what they're doing, that sense of passion, that playfulness, that is it is it there in everyone to bring forward? Maybe I I don't even know the answer to that. I I'd like to think that there is. Of course there is. There's a little child in all of us. <laughs> we're all born innocents and we're little children and went through the trials and tribulations of life and got to where we are now. How do we recapture that spirit? Well, you know, when you ask about, do I think that people everybody is playful and all of that? Well. You know, to be honest, if you think about some children, they're not all that playful in that way or that lighthearted. Some of them are just more serious, quiet, introverted children, and they're happy to sit in the corner and read a book mm -hmm. or whatever it is they like to do, do puzzles or whatever. But so it's not necessarily about, oh, no, I have to learn how to be playful if you're not that kind of person. But the point is about living from the heart. It's more about what what is in your heart, what lights you up. What is the thing that just brings you real joy? And if it is sitting in a corner and reading books as much as you can, well, then do that. If that's the thing that just makes your soul sing, do that. But the thing is, we, we kind of beat ourselves up for doing anything that doesn't work. You know, we come from a culture that's all about you're supposed to be working. The more, the more you work, the, the better you are. You know, if you work a million hours a day, wow, you're really something. No, that's so wrong. We, that's 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 just that's painful. We weren't yeah. designed to work all the time, and it doesn't make you a better person. You'll be the best you can be. <laughs> I love that. Um, if you're if you're living in balance, which means you have to have some play time, whatever play means to you. That's just enjoyment, enjoyment time. If you don't like the word play, because weirdly, some, no, weirdly for me. I don't mean to put a label on it, but interestingly, I don't know. Some people don't want to play, yeah. but maybe it's they love to bowl. Maybe they love riding bikes. Maybe it's whatever, but it doesn't matter. Just whatever you really love. But I've also met some people who, okay, two things. And if, if my mental, my, my mental, my, what's it, what do they call it? What do they call it? My mental pause brain. <laughs> if I can remember the two things. Um, one of them, oh, what, is it, what are they? Oh yeah, one of them is when, when, for example, when I'm playing the piano or something and people will say, oh, well, I wish I could play like that. You know, I always wanted to learn how to play the piano and they'll say, so learn. Oh no, I'm too old for that. Well, have you got a pulse? Yeah. Are you breathing vertical and conscious? Yeah. Well, I guess you can learn how to play the piano. Oh no, I couldn't. Oh, I'm too busy and I got work and blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. You want to make excuses and not play the piano? That's up to you. If you really want to do it, go take some lessons. If you're not sure, go look on YouTube. I'm sure you can find lots of lessons there to at least start or get a feel for it. But there's this, this, oh yeah. And so the other, the other thing is that sometimes there are people who really genuinely don't know what they love. Yeah. And as a numerologist, another thing on the wacky list for me, um, sometimes I've had, you know, I'll tell, I'll give people their numerology report. And it's very detailed. It's several pages of detailed information based just on four numbers that you get from the birth date. And it's frighteningly, creepily accurate. And it's broken down into really a lot of detail. And, and then it'll, it'll give some idea about what people should do, could do, might do, would be good at or not good at. And so we start trying to have a conversation about, all right, now what would you really love to do? So let's let's help you figure out your destiny here. We, we, we see what you're capable of for your destiny, what it should involve. What do you really love? And they just go blank. Like, oh, no. 
So, I mean, I guess for people who are that, like that's, that's, I think being just super disconnected and really having had it kind of drummed into your head to just do what you're expected to do and to just suppress any interest or, you know, not supposed to do that or whatever, or maybe somebody put you down for it because, you know, we come out of generations where that was quite common. Yes. You know, that's silly. Don't do that. You're wasting your time or whatever. And so I think one of the best things people can do uh, in answer to your question, I guess, to, to try to reconnect. Meditation is a really great one. Um, and even if you don't, if that word scares the pants off you, please don't let it. <laughs> because really, it, yeah, we, we could talk about meditation, too, and what it is and what it isn't. But the most important thing, then, we'll just call it this, just sit in silence. Just sit someplace with your phone out of the room and turned off while I'm silent. Tell anybody else in the house you don't want to be disturbed until you're good and ready to come out. Give yourself some time to just sit with your eyes closed and just breathe. Just focus on your breathing. And if your head is going to a million places, just keep refocusing on your breathing. Mind is going elsewhere again. Refocus on the breathing. The more you do that, the quicker you'll start to kind of sink into a nice deep state of relaxation maybe not a complete meditation until you've done it a few times and you start getting good at it. But when you give yourself, it's about kind of training your mind to just calm down and focus on the breath. When you can do that, you get some space in your head and in, in your heart and soul for those feelings to bubble up where there's that little desire that says, hmm, this could be fun. Maybe I'd like to try and draw. Maybe I'll go get some paints. Maybe I'll go buy a puzzle. Maybe I'll, I, whatever. Um, but you have to give yourself the quiet brain space to do that. And that's the best, the best way to start. If you don't know, if you really have no idea what you should be doing or what you might like to do, just give yourself some stillness and do that every day. If you ever, even if you only get five minutes, give yourself that few minutes a day to just sit in silence and, and start training your brain to calm. So eventually those, those uh, ideas will start to, to erupt, bubble up, come forward, and uh, that's a that's a great place to begin. It is a great place to begin. Thank you for sharing that. And if <clears throat> even if it doesn't bring you any answers right away, it will at least bring you a sense of quiet inner peace. Yep. Yep. Just to be in a calm state for a few moments uh, as a way to start your day is really, really. It's an amazing grounding beautiful way to step into life yeah. from this place of feeling a sense of quiet here inside mm -hmm. and it becomes easier to listen to your heart to hear the voice of what it is you truly want what will make your heart and soul sing exactly but you have to yeah you have to have that practice to sit in silence and one of my favorite ones to do that's really easy for people who are just beginning and, and the mind is doing its thing is to just stare at a candle flame, light a tea light or a little candle and just keep staring at the flame. And that's your focal point. And don't let yourself think about anything else but that candle flame. And when your mind wanders to, well, I have to get ready for work, like set a timer so you don't have to think about that. Give yourself five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it is. But as you think about, oh, I got to do this today and this today, just go, oh, no, no, no candle flame and look at the wick and look at the flame and watch it move and look at the colors every time you drift away look at the candle flame that again is a really simple beautiful way to begin the day especially now in the northern hemisphere where we are where the days are getting shorter i love it i love it i love the dark it makes me so happy and uh well, i'm gonna miss not i don't have a fireplace now but i loved it in calgary at about four o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon chucking logs in the fireplace and oh it's beautiful but yeah, candle thing first thing in the morning, five minutes before you go to work. Oh, when you when you do that for, I, I would I would invite people to give themselves two weeks to try it. Two weeks mm -hmm. every morning, five minutes as soon as you get out of bed. Do what they call the RPM method: rise, pee, meditate. <laughs> Don't do anything else, and um, and just sit there for five minutes and stare at that candle flame. And after two weeks to see what a difference it's making in your life and in your day and in your business and in how you feel about yourself and just your overall sense of peace and calm 
and uh, you might start to have some creativity um, starting to show itself a little bit more, which would be fun. That is so brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, <laughs> give yourself the grace to have that five or 10 minutes for yourself. And uh, RPM, rise, be, meditate. I like it. <laughs> There's no time to let anything else get in the way and interfere before you give yourself that first, right? Even yeah. if you break your teeth, it can be too stimulating. Mm. Um, that's it. Just that order, that's all you got to do. Don't turn on your phone. It can wait five or 10 minutes. <laughs> There's nothing else you need to do. It's the most important thing. It's it's self-care. It's, it's self-love. Speaking of living from the heart, if you don't truly love and value yourself and give yourself that little bit in the morning to set yourself up for the day, how are you ever going to be able to give your best or be your best? It all starts there. Absolutely has to start there. Absolutely. Yes. Self-love, showing self-love and compassion first, kindness first to self. Only then can it flow out into the world. Right. Wow. You have such wow. a beautiful smile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really do. Thank you. I missed chatting with you. It's time, time to do that again. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm looking at the time and I'm going, holy cow, you know, we were talking about how time can just fly by. I want to be able to put on screen here a way for our viewers to get in touch with you. So are you currently using a website or? Yep, uh, libertyforest.com. Okay, that's easy. Liberty Forest. Liberty Forest, you're pretty good. And that's what people mostly forget. Uh, and I'm on Facebook. I usually forget to use Instagram, and I really don't understand Twitter. And, and the witchy one. Witchy one rocks is her Facebook page. Somebody else had the witchy one, so we got the witchy one rocks. Okay, so we've got libertyforest.com and Liberty Forest and the Witchy One Rocks on Facebook. And people might want to be in touch with you if they want a little help with learning to meditate, to be more mindful, to... I use I do hypnosis online as well for all kinds of things. Building confidence, anxiety issues, stress reduction, weight loss, um, whatever, pain relief all kinds of things. It's just astonishing what the mind can do. So that's the other thing. Thank you. And, and maybe just maybe you would also help people get in touch with that creative side, that creative aspect that's, that is, as we said, uh, a key to living from the heart. It creativity is an expression of the heart, really that that's how I might define creativity. Um, creating something new from something else. So the something else might be a thought, an idea, paint, paper, um, pen, paper. Um, <laughs> and from those basic, basic tools, something is created that is tangible, visible, audible, whatever and that expression can bring such joy into life and I, I did a couple of talks a couple of years ago when i was still in calgary about the create creativity being an expression of your spirit it's it's the way your spirit expresses its essence and then i was reading something recently that was talking about um about now, I don't want to get all religious here, but I like I like the idea whether, you know, they, they're talking about God. So whatever word you want to put on it, but I'll we'll just go with what the book said. But it was something to do with like, you know, God created us or, you know, our spirits um, with the gifts that we've been given to express God. It's basically God, you know, when they say about God in human form, it really is about that. It's that that spirit, the essence of who we are is a spirit. And the human body is just the vehicle to express that. And I believe that the spirit is kind of all of our spirits are like 
individual rays of the same sun, right? When, like when you see it coming through the clouds, it all kind of blends together. They look separate, but they're really not. And so it, to me, it's like, that's how I would describe what you're talking about, that it's like that awareness or the way it was put about, it's like, well, that those gifts are expressing God through what you do, through through the fullness of this is my spirit and, and using our lives to do that. I thought, wow, that was pretty powerful. So. Yeah, I like that. We're all rays of the same sun. My my uh, my name for God is Soa, source of all. Oh. And that, that source of all life, the source of all joy, the source of all love is what is what we are created of. And yes, each of us is a unique expression of that. Mm -hmm. So we have our gifts and our talents and, and our ways of being to share with the world to express our unique ray of sunshine. And uh, you have been a lovely ray of sunshine in my day this morning, Liberty. And I'm sure our viewers will find that you have been a ray of sunshine in their life and we all take away the gift of the beautiful creative being that you are and um, i know myself i'm going to spend a little more time following the witchy one because she's <laughs> fun and her exploration of life is as a very much a parallel of everyone's search for the meaning of life of finding our way in the world right we we learn things by playing around, testing things out, feeling things out. Yeah, and, she doesn't uh, understand much about the normal world, so she's learning. It's all about change and adaptation for her right now. <laughs> and that's what all of us go through regularly, change, yeah. adaptation, transition. Yep. Speaking of change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can see I'm bursting into flames again, but it's okay because I also have my own sprinkler system. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so we are we are actually run over time now. So I am uh, to honor our viewers. I'm going to say ciao for now. Be sure to uh, subscribe to uh, Heart and Mind Matters, and be sure to look up Liberty Forest and all the ways that she can help you in your life. Uh, stay tuned next week. We'll have another great guest and keep watching Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. Ciao for now. Bye. And thanks again, Liberty. No, thank you. You are such a beautiful soul. And I'm so grateful for today. Thank you for this beautiful invitation. Lovely you to see you smile again. So, so welcome.